Hello everyone, my name is Justin Odisho, and in this episode of Every Effect in After Effects Explained, we're taking a look at a really fun folder, which is the Transition Effects. So why don't we just begin with Block Dissolve to start. These are just alphabetically ordered, but I'll show you the basic idea of how to apply these transitions in After Effects. Because you notice it's not like in Premiere Pro or another video editor like that, where you just drag them onto the end of a clip. In this case, you just drag it onto the clip itself entirely. And the way you create the transition is in the effects control panel using the transition completeness. So here we're at 0% and we can drag it all the way up to 100% to create a complete transition. Now you don't have to do that, for example, you could use these effects just to create multi-layered compositions. But if you did want to create a transition at a certain point in your clip, you'd click the stopwatch icon, start at let's say 0%. So right now we're fully showing this clip and then move forward a little bit and turn the transition up to 100%. And what that will do, if we drop down this layer, you can see two keyframes we've created under the block dissolve effect. And in between those keyframes, we have a linear degree of transition from zero to 100. So block dissolve, as you can see, is like a grainy noise dissolve. However, you can also adjust the block width and height. So you can make it like a different types of block dissolve, which can be cool, or like a large cloudy dissolve. But if you uncheck soft edges, you can really get like a puzzle block dissolve. So lots of different flexibility just in this one effect. And remember, you can always combine things together and stack them. But let's continue down the list. And there's some really cool ones in here that aren't available in things like Premiere Pro. So the next one we have is Card Wipe. And this introduces another concept that you'll see within a lot of these transitions is the idea of a back layer or pointing to different layers that are being revealed. So by default, you'll see if we go from 0% completeness to 100, since it's revealing itself, we don't get a transition. We just kind of flip over back to the same thing. But if I choose the layer underneath, then we can get a transition. And the cool part is in After Effects, you don't even have to necessarily choose the layer directly underneath. You can choose the layer a couple layers down and still get a unique effect where it's going from layer one to layer four and layer two just happens to be behind it in the meanwhile, but you could even substitute in like a black solid or a gradient layer if you wanted to mix other things. So card wipe is cool. You can see it's flipping over these several series of cards. The transition width, you can adjust for different sized cards, different sized rows and columns, and you can really get flexible here to create tons of cool effects. Moving forward, we're gonna have a lot of wipes in this, different kinds of wipes and fades. So CC glass wipe is a cool one. It almost makes it seem as if your image turns into like a glass or chrome type of bubbly thing with some cool distortion going on. You see like around the trees and stuff. And again, for this one, you choose the layer to reveal as well. So if I reveal the layer underneath, we get this bubbly fade from like the bright to the dark portions all the way until it completely fades out. This effect also demonstrates another unique thing where I can reveal the layer underneath, but I can also choose an intermediary layer to be the gradient. So let's say we take an unrelated layer and use that as the gradient layer. Now it's going to dissolve based on the contrast and brightness and darkness of this layer. So this layer here, which had nothing to do with the two that we're transitioning between, we're now using that layer as the gradient layer or kind of like the layer that's being displaced between. So that alone gives you like a whole new level of flexibility. You can use another layer or you can even, for example, create a solid such as a black solid and do something like add a gradient ramp from our generate folder 
which we saw in the generate effects episode. So we can add like a gradient ramp from black to white. And we can use that as our gradient layer. So if I choose that black solid, make sure we choose effects and masks since the gradient is actually being applied with an effect, not on the layer itself. Now we can use that and you'll see we're getting the wipe from top to bottom as is seen in the gradient going from white to black. And although that just kind of creates a linear wipe, let's imagine if we added even just a little bit of distortion to this, like let's say a wave warp from our distort folder, which we did an episode on. And this even has animation involved, which is another parameter that we can include. And if I use that as the gradient layer this time, you'll see we get an even different effect where it's almost looking like raindrops or something or melting in a really cool way. Next up, we have CC Grid Wipe. This follows a similar type of effect control as all the previous ones, but in this case, it allows us to wipe from one clip to the next with a cool grid pattern. You can also influence the rotation of the grid, the border amount, and the tile amount. So you can transition into or out of a clip with cool shapes, and you can adjust the types of grid that's going on. And remember, you can also use these effects on shape layers or just background layers. You don't have to be transitioning just between clips. For example, here's the grid wipe if we were using it on just like colored backdrops. It's going to create different types of ideas for you. Next up, we have CC image wipe. This one again kind of wipes based on the contrast of the original clip. So you see from this case, it's getting rid of the shadows first and then the highlights, kind of like a Luma fade. But you can adjust some things about it, like the softness of it. And also you can choose the gradient layer. Like I said before, you can make it disappear based on the contrast of another layer. And by default, it's the luminance or the brightness, but you can change it to anything like by the saturation or the general shape or different color channels individually. So next up we have CC Jaws. This one just kind of rips open the image like some shark teeth, chomp, chomp, chomp. And you can adjust it from spikes to robo, block, whatever you want, different kinds. But you can also change the rotation of them and the size of the ripples. Next up we have Light Wipe. This one kind of unique, just bursting open with a circular shape and a glow of light to the revealing clip underneath. I can imagine this would be useful in particular cases where the underlying clip is really like starts out with a flash of light. And you have some cool options on changing the shape. So a square or a door entirely. That can be like a cool one right there. We also have line sweep. This one's cool. It's not like a vertical line that goes through the image. It's like stepped lines that transition. So if I actually keyframe this one, you can see it goes row by row, kind of like scan lines, kind of like a computer loading up an image or something like that. And you can adjust the direction of it and also the size of the lines and the slant of them as well. So it's paints in your image like stripe by stripe. Next up, we have radial scale wipe. This one is another one that kind of bursts from the center distorting the image out around to open up to the new clip. And you can also reverse it so it happens the other way, almost like a lens wipe, bringing the clip in or out. And you can also change it from the center to any corner or anything if you want. Next up, we have CC scale wipe. This is one where you really might want to just be able to use it by itself sometime because you can create some really cool pixel stretching effects with this one. And you can always just keyframe other parameters, such as the center point. You can make it gradually move into a clip. And in this case, you can use even those kind of parameters to create the transition in different ways as well, rather than just there's not really any completion effect in this one, just stretch and center and direction. After that, we have CC Twister. This one kind of just allows us to twist and fold onto another video clip. But remember, we have to choose the backside so we can choose a different backside. And let's say we added one of those solids instead of like another random clip as the background. Then we can see a case where 
even though it shrinks down to less than the actual size or alpha shape, we can fill something else in in the background. So that's CC Twister. You also have CC warp o -Matic. This one's really cool. It's like a morph cut almost. It just magically warps and distorts and fades into another clip. So if I were to warp from zero to 100, you see it's more than just your average crossfade. We get a, a distortion based on the contrast and shapes of each layer. If you really want to see it in action, you can crank up the warp amount and then you'll really see some distortions going on between the clips. Next up we have gradient wipe. This is kind of in line with the image wipes and all the different kind of wipes that fade an image out based on the darkness and the lightness. So it can be kind of a unique flavor or take on just a general cross dissolve. And you can also use it to do sky replacement type of ideas and things like that where you can take advantage of the contrast difference between a bright sky and a silhouette of a person. And as we've been seeing, you can choose different gradient layers entirely to be used as the contrast. So we could use the, one of the solids that we created earlier. And in this case, we get a gradient wipe based on one of those four color gradients that we did. After that, we have iris wipe. This one will allow us to create a iris shape that slowly expands out and you can choose how many sides it has. So a triangle to a full on almost circle. And you can also choose the rotation of that. So you have a lot of flexibility on the different type of shapes to create, inner and outer. And you can kind of cut clips open using these shapes. Next up, a very standard one, we just have linear wipe. This one will just wipe from one direction to the other. It's simple, but probably will come in handy compared to some of these more out there effects. You can choose the direction of the wipe and also the feathering or softness. So a very basic one, but one that you might go to often. After that, we have radial wipe. This one is kind of like linear wipe, but more in a clock fashion, clockwise or counterclockwise, or both you can do at the same time. This can be a cool way to transition or mix between them. The first thing I think of is just your standard 54321 title stock image, but I've actually even used this effect, I think in my loading circle tutorial to close and open out a circle shape at different percentages. So you can get creative and use it on shapes. And lastly, we have Venetian blinds. So this will just open or slice open your image like the blinds of a curtain, whether you do that vertically or horizontally, and you can choose the width and the size that it opens your image and then the percentage. So this one can be cool, just slicing open your image in vertical lines or horizontal lines or diagonal. And remember, although this is everything in the transition folder, that doesn't mean that you can't create transitions with other effects that aren't a transition, like just distortions or blurs. And likewise, it doesn't mean that you can't create effects from things that are in the transition folder. So hopefully this gave you a good idea and overview of the effects in the transition folder. If you enjoyed this video, definitely subscribe to my channel to stay tuned for all of my new videos. You can find all of the episodes of this series in a playlist on my channel and many more videos as well. So thank you so much for watching and I'll see you over in the next episode where we talk about the utility folder.